Praise the Most High Family. <clears throat> it is a gorgeous day here in the Carolinas. And we're so glad to see it. So get, glad to be in the land of the living once again. Saying all praises to the Most High today. Hallelujah. We thank the Most High for being who he is in our lives today, family. I do hope everyone is well. And like myself, you're able to get out and enjoy this day. Getting yourself in some fresh air, some sunshine. If you're seeing your naked woods. And some good exercise. Hallelujah. I do have a grand idea we're going to share today. And it's one that we're taking from two ideas we already shared in the past. And I think both of, both of which the Most High has had us go back and redo both of them one time before. And one of them twice. And this will be the third time. But the idea is an audience of one. Get out your emotions and repent. And repent. We added that in at the end. And repent. So that's that's the main thing we're 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 about here in the secret place, truth be told. It's calling calling folks to repentance. Because folks will not be able to go stand before the most high and say Robert didn't tell them to repent. Robert didn't tell them to turn away from their, their wicked ways, their sin. The Urban Dictionary defines audience as focusing our performance. What we do, say, think, or not. So as to be acceptable to one person, individual, or deity. The Urban Dictionary states early Christians or people of the way, like the Apostle Paul or Apostle Saul, who would rather face death than compromise their core beliefs, live their lives for an audience of one. And uh, I was going to write in my notes, but I never did. But the most grand example is Yahushua. He lived that lifestyle of, of having only an audience of one, and that was the most high. He said, I only say and do what he tell me to say, or what I see him say and do. Hallelujah. But we who live before the audience of one can say to the world, I have only one audience. Before you, I have nothing to prove, nothing to gain, and nothing to lose. And this was by Genesis, or, or Genesis, Genesis like the beer and I don't know if this was spoken by um, by like the, the fellow from um, Guinness's um, the show Guinness's where they would do the impossible things and I think that's who it's coming from but I couldn't find the author of that I just found this quote like um, right now quotes like this because it makes so much sense and where I get this audience of one let me say, put my two in <laughs> the most I gave me that um, a while back right before I started doing these recordings he said Robert give me 20 minutes a day and do these recordings as if you, you only have me to worry about me, me you're doing, doing them only for me I'm your only concern. I'm your audience of one. Hallelujah. He told me back then, don't worry about nobody's numbers. That's exactly how he said, don't worry about nobody's numbers, likes, comments, shares. Don't you worry about that. You just worry about pleasing me. Hallelujah. And that's what we've been doing ever since. The phrase audience of one is a concept that has multiple meanings 
including living for the Most High Yahuwah. The idea that people should live their lives with Yahuwah in mind and that he is the only one who counts. And then being aware of his presence, of Yahuwah's presence. The idea that people should be aware of Yahuwah's presence in their lives. And that he is always watching. Mm -mm. If we really could grab hold of that concept that the Most High is right, right there with us all the time and watching everything we say and do. I've had that feeling one or two times in my life where it really hit home to where he let me experience that idea. I'm watching you. <laughs> and I mean it in that sense. Not that I'm, I'm with you and protecting you because he let me feel that a few times also. But And it's different from when you do something, you know you're wrong and you get a bad feeling. No, it wasn't this. It was like, oh, I see what you're doing. You need to tighten up your tighten up. <laughs> You need to tighten up, fella, because I'm right here watching you, and I'm not pleased. He's done that a couple of times, and it, it wasn't fun, but I got myself straight quick. And see, that's what we have to realize, family. It's us that um, makes these decisions out here. He's given us an opportunity to, to make decisions for ourselves. I don't know why this camera is blinking like that. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Hallelujah. Living in a countercultural way. The idea that people should live in a way that is different from the idolatrous ways and norms of this world's present yet dying system. And that they should not make its idols their Allahims. And paying attention to why we do things. The idea that people should pay careful attention to why they are doing something and that they should do things by Yahuwah's guidance and for his approval. The phrase is often used as a reminder that we should live for Yahuwah's glory and not for the glory of the crowd. It can also be used as a way to share with others our beliefs and that we value our faith in Yahuwah alone. We live our lives in, the, in this audience of one manner. We are serving in the capacity of our word of the day, which is exemplar. Exemplar. A person or thing serving as a typical example or excellent model. And that um, meaning I gave before was the, the, the meaning of exemplar. Exemplar not um, an audience of one that we use right in the beginning and this is who I am this is how I choose to live my life as a person or as a person serving as a typical example or excellent model for the most highest kingdom and the second part of this idea is get out of your emotions and repent repent means to turn and run from your sins to the Most High Yahuwah because time is at hand. The end of this world system is swiftly approaching. Hallelujah. And we're going to look at some script. And first is Colossians 3, 23 and through 24. Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Most High and not for men knowing that it is from the Most High that you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is Adonai and Mashiach whom you serve. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21-28 says, Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very Elohim of Shalom sanctify you wholly. And I pray Yahuwah, the Most High, your whole Ruach and soul and body be preserved blameless until the coming of our Adonai, Yahushua HaMashiach. And 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, study to show yourself approved unto the Most High, a workman that need not to be ashamed, 
rightly dividing the word of truth. A lot of folks are going to be put, going to be found ashamed or put to shame because of their pride. Like myself did, they feel that they know it all. They feel that they are too smart to be tricked by Hasatan. And they feel that old time religion was good enough for mom and them. Pardon me. They feel they feel that old time religion was good enough for mama, big mama and them. So it's good enough for them or good enough for me. How terribly sad this entire world has been tricked. Reality check with all the trillions of dollars. And where we're going with this this part of the idea is also that you need to um have an audience of one and get out your, your emotions. When you're seeking the most eyes face about um how to live your life, the direction you should go in, and how that you should do your own study and not really thinking that um you already know it all. Even if you had been in church for 30 or 40 years like I was, and some longer than that, 50 or 60 years, and don't know nothing about the text. Nothing but what they was um, taught by their pastors. And nine times out of 10, they, they missed on them. But that's where we're coming at with this part of the idea. And as we were saying, reality check, with all the trillions of dollars collected for mission field, for the mission field ministry, why haven't the so-called God spell been preached already around the so-called world millions of times? That's a good question, man. The text says, once this, the gospel is preached, then Yahushua will, will come back. But he can't come back because the good news hadn't been preached at all. See, the Most High had to wake his children back up before the good news was going to be continued to preach. Be continued, continued preached. See, he started off when he stood up in that, that temple and said that the Ruach of the Most High is upon me because he has um, anointed me to preach the Basura. Not the God spell. <laughs> See, that's what most folks are under, the God spell. Not the um, Basura. The Basura is the good news. That you don't have to be in the state that you, you used to be in. But the good news, all it has done was um, let me read, colonize. The God spell was, was used to colonize every foreign country there is out here by the U.S. and its allies. If, if you don't believe it, look it up. To take their natural resources. And let's read over what I wrote. Reality check. The only God spell these devils have ever preached was coloniz colonization. The act of taking control of a foreign area and its people to extract their natural resources and gain slave labor. So this is this is what's been um, proven, especially here of late, to be what what this country and um, its allies have been doing. We see the maps how um, they divided up Africa, and the text says that they would divide his land. This is what the Most High said: they would divide his land and steal his um. His, his hidden ones, his children. And really, he, like I said, he knew it was gonna happen, but it was our fault because we was already here. We didn't wanna follow his laws, statutes, and commands. So he said, I'm gonna scatter you. I'm gonna let you be right up under those, your enemy who you want to be like and serve their, their gods, their Elohims, and be just like them. And when you come to your senses, 
and wake up, you realize that you have been taken for fools. And as I wrote in my notes, it's been proven by, it's been proven country by country or nation by na nation, the seed of Hasatan only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Just like you'll look at, I'm gonna put it in this recording. You look at the map of Africa and in their heyday when uh, the European Union had it sec sectioned off to where they had a different part stealing resources and that's why that's why we, we're in World War 3 now because they can't just um, snatch up Africa without um, getting rid of China and Russia and their allies first but their most important um, opposition to running up into Africa and taking the resources like they've been doing is China and Russia they're in the way because the um, African leaders, they refuse to um, be puppets that started standing up. Just like with all the coups that's taken place in the last six, seven years, I believe. Yeah, Africa, and, I mean, Russia and China are backing these fellas saying, we, we got your back. Cut your um, oppressor loose and we'll help you. And this is all the Most High is doing. See, he'll raise up a nation by tearing one down and using other nations to tear that nation down. And then he'll have the nation that's, that's, that's fighting against his people, he'll have them fighting each other. Hallelujah. But we're in a place now where we're seeing the Most High take care of his handiwork. My pop love cutting grass, family. <laughs> he love that lawnmower. Oh boy. And he does. He like for things to be in its proper order. Looking nice and trim. And will not let me get on that lawnmower for nothing. For nothing. I'm like, I pop have at it. also as I wrote in my notes their track record has been flawless in its application until the last decade or so simultaneously the Most High has begun waking up his dry bones and gathering his chosen people together to wake up the rest of the rest of those that have eyes to see and ears to hear the real basura or good news is spelled out in Isaiah 61 the text Yahushua stood up in the temple and proclaimed just as we were just saying but he only stood up and proclaimed just a little bit of it as written in Luke but now everyone under the sound of my voice are at the crossroads of decision and faith An audience of one. It's time we all have an audience of one and get out of, get out of our emotions and repent. Because we're all about to face it. And what you gonna do when I get my hands on you? No more playing games. No more playing games. And what you gonna do when I get my hands on you? No more playing games. No more playing games. Hallelujah. But yeah, it's time we make some hard decisions for ourselves, family. With this audience of one. Because we're going to be accountable, family. Each and every last one of us. Hallelujah, family. That's my time. Do stay up and keep pushing forward in the right direction. Shalom. Hallelujah.